गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम I will ask for your complete silence please and also if you have your phone with you please check it to make sure it has been turned off We hear a lot about meditation People ask I wish to meditate mujhe meditation karni hai kaise kare How do we meditate Jagat Guru Shri Kripalu ji Maharaj has taught the world how to meditate most effectively how to think about god meditation is done with the mind how do we connect the mind to god how do we attain that yog that union of the mind with god many people say i am learning to meditate but it's really really difficult because i'm asked to close my eyes and just hold on to one thought but my mind is going all over the place or that i am asked to fix my attention on the flame of a candle but my mind goes all over the place or that i am asked to just meditate on my breath the breath take, taking in the breath taking the breath out inhale exhale but i'm not able to meditate like that the most effective method of meditation is roop dhyan meditation on the divine form of god if we subtract god then what are we really meditating on we are perhaps learning how to concentrate the mind but when we do roop dhyan we do two things we are able to accomplish eventually two things one is that we are learning to focus our mind secondly a huge benefit is that we will be thinking about god hindi mein hum bolte hain ek panth do kaaj meditation karte hain to bhagwan ka hi bhagwan ke upar hi meditate karna chahiye na so we need to add god to our meditation that's what a lot of people don't do they are not taught to do that meditation without god it is next to impossible in kali yug if i ask you to close your eyes and just meditate you won't be able to do it unless you are god realized or very very advanced devotee very advanced meditator fact is that we need a lot of help our mind needs a lot of help to meditate on god and so for us people living in kali yug who wish to meditate we are told that we need to take the help of god with name and form so in our temples and in the temple at home that you have we have god with name and form we have radha and krishna we have sita and ram and in many temples there are many different forms of god why is the form necessary because we have a form we have a body and so it is very very difficult if not impossible for us to meditate on god who has neither name nor form that is also one of the aspects of god god is without name and form just as god is with name and form we call that aspect of god brahm the scriptures call it brahm in the bhagavat mahapuran bhagwan vedavyasa says vadanti tat tatva vidas tatvam yajgyanam advayam 
ब्रह्मेति परमात्मेति भगवान इति शब्द्यते there are three aspects of god one is brahm one is paramatma one is bhagwan brahm is when we prefer to think of god as having neither name nor form paramatma is the very majestic and very godly form of god that is mahavishnu bhagwan is a loving and very intimate form of god like bhagwan shri ram bhagwan shri krishna so it is obvious that we who have a name and a form we are used to living in this world which has a name which has a form we relate well with the world because the world has a form it has name so it's obvious then that out of the three aspects of god we would do best if we were to go with the bhagwan aspect of god god who has a name god who has a form plus god who comes down to earth and performs very sweet leelas or pastimes because we could say well god with name and form that's mahavishnu as well but you see mahavishnu is very majestic he's full of aishwarya he's very majestic that's god being god but we need god to be loving so god comes down to earth and he performs leelas we call him uh, leela dhari shri krishna is leela dhari so we need to relate to god who has a name who has a form and who's very loving we are afraid of god but we're not afraid of shri krishna we're not afraid of him we say god is uh, he punishes but when we think about shri krishna we think about him playing the flute we think about him as we were singing a little earlier uh, he's waking up in the morning he's in the form of a child i ask you do we ever become afraid of a child we exactly no we don't we don't become afraid of a child a child we we play with the child we want to protect the child we uh, we find the child to be very pure and innocent we are there's no child is not menacing when it when we think about god say oh god punishes us he notes down our actions he gives us punishment he gives us the fruits of our actions we can't really relate to him we become afraid of him but we need to be in love with him that is where bhagwan comes in that's where bhagwan shri radha krishna come in that is where bhagwan shri krishna comes in so rather than meditating on brahm on nothingness which we will never succeed in doing not in kali yug anyhow we need to connect our mind to god with name and form who is leela dhari and that is shri krishna so when we do roop dhyan when we meditate we are actually doing roop dhyan we are trying to meditate on him on god and when we think about his various attributes his various um, virtues such as he is very compassionate he is infinitely compassionate he is infinitely beautiful he is infinitely forgiving forgiving that's very important for us when we think about such attributes then we start loving him that love that we have for the world but not not for god we start loving god and we when we as we start to know him more and more our love increases our love for him increases it grows more and more and then when we think about his pastimes o oh krishna steals butter from the homes of the gopis we become delighted that our lord is a little child he per- performs such leelas that he becomes a child and he doesn't just steal the butter he does in very playful ways one day a gopi thinks to herself today i'm going to catch him he comes and he steals butter from the storehouse where i've stored all the butter and i have not been able to catch him but today i shall capture the thief and she is ready for him and when he comes in with his friends raiding the pantry 
raiding the storehouse, she is ready for him. She catches him red-handed. So he's caught and he's going to be in trouble, right? Of course he's going to be in trouble. But actually this story unfolds in a very amazing way, very playful way. The gopi, who is a true devotee of Sri Krishna, she is inwardly very delighted that she has caught him because now she is attaining his touch. She's holding on to him. She's, she's got a strong hold on him. And she's taking him to his mother's house, to his parents' house. She's going to complain to Yashoda that your son, you never believe me when I say that he's been stealing in my house. Today I've caught him red-handed. So she's delighted to have the touch of her Lord and she's delighted to spend this time with him as she takes him, as she walks with him to his house. So when she reaches the house of Nandan Yashoda, she calls out from outside, Yashoda, are suntiyo Yashoda? Yashoda, are you home? She asks. Yashoda comes out. Ha ha, ghar pe hu. Kya baat hai? What, what is the matter? Yashoda, you have never believed me that your son is a thief. Today I have the proof right here with me. She's not looking at him. She's saying, I have the proof. She's looking at Yashoda. Proof? I've caught him. Look, I brought your son with me. Yashoda starts to laugh. Yashoda says, Kanaya. And out comes Kanaya, rubbing his eyes. He's been taking a nap. And the gopi says, Kanaya's here? And she looks. Oh my goodness, where did Kanaya go? How is it that my husband is over here? <laughs> she's tied up her husband and she's holding on to him so that he may not escape. And she's thinking, am I going mad? I brought Kanaya, how did my husband end up over here? Well, she doesn't know anything anymore. And Yashoda is laughing and she's saying to the gopi, you're too tired. I think you're overworking yourself. You need to relax. You need to get some rest. And the gopi has no idea what has happened. And Kanaya is smiling because this is one of his pranks. It's not a prank that anyone can pull. It's a prank that only he can pull. That all of a sudden he becomes her husband and then he has another form. Now the gopi takes, she leaves and she's, she's got her head facing downward. She's embarrassed. And as she's walking with, who she thinks is her husband, now he turns into Kanaya once again, and he asks, so, how do you like that? How do you like that, he asks, she, he asks her. Now, when you have such a playful Lord, you're not going to be afraid of him, are you? This is how we should meditate on him. That he is not just God. He is my Lord and Master, but he's much more than that. Rupa Goswami says in Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu, do not worship God, worship Krishna. And we ask, well, is Krishna not God? God, there's only one God, and we know him as Krishna. Krishna means the all-attractive one. So God is all-attractive, hence his name is Krishna. So are you saying Krishna is not God? He says, yes, of course he's God, but he's much more than God. So if I say to you, worship God, you'll think of God who's very stern, who is, um, who, who, who is a judge, a neutral judge, and who gives punishment. You'll become afraid of him. You need to love him. So I say to you, these are the words of saints, such as Rupa Goswami. They say to us, look, worship Krishna. In other words, worship that loving aspect of God. Love Bhagavan. Don't try to worship, don't try to meditate on Brahm, who has neither name or form, how in the world will you connect with him? Don't worship him as the Mahavishnu, Paramatma, the soul of all souls, because he is God, he's filled with majesty. He's too majestic, too great for you. You will not be able to love him, you'll hesitate to go near him. Love Bhagwan, because he'll come down to earth, he'll come down to your level. He is God but he has come down to your level. So now you can love him, not just as your 
mother and father, your divine mother, divine father, your lord and master, but as your child, as your best friend, and most beautifully, as your beloved. So we don't become afraid of friends. We, you know, no parent is afraid of their child. And certainly you're not afraid of your beloved. So Sri Krishna becomes everything. He is everything to us. He's Lord and Master. He's Mother and Father. He's the best friend, eternal friend. He is a loving child and the most loving beloved. Swami Sakha Sutpati Govind Radhe Rasik Batavi Tosu Char Char Nate Radha Govind Geet by Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj. In this couplet, Sri Maharaji says, Rasik saints, saints of the highest caliber, the ones who have tasted the sweetest nectar of God, because there are levels over there as well. So Rasik saint is the highest saint, saint of the highest caliber who has drunk the sweetest nectar of God, and if we surrender to him, we can also drink that nectar, the sweetest nectar of Sri Krishna. Rasik saints have recommended that we form four relationships with God. Swami, Sakha, Sut, Pati. Char, Char, Nati. Four relationships. He is my master. I am his humble servant. He's my eternal master. He was, is, and always will remain my master. Jivera Shwarupa Hoy, Krishnero Nityadas. Gauranga Mahaprabhu says every individual soul is an eternal servant of God. So he is naturally our master. But he's not just our master, we go beyond that relationship, and he is our friend. The Vedas say, the eternal voice of the Vedas says, Dwa Suparna, Dwa Suparna, Sayuja, Sakhaya. God is our eternal friend, Sakha. What a wonderful friend he is. He lives in our heart. And he inspires us to do the right thing. There's a still, small voice inside of us that tells us to walk on the right path, not to do the wrong thing. We call it our conscience. It's God who's telling us what to do, what not to do. When we are about to take the wrong decision, when we are about to act on a wrong decision, there's something that bothers us from inside. That's a voice of God saying, don't do it. You'll regret it. If we heed that instruction, then we do well. That's our eternal friend telling us to do the right thing. Because if they're, let's say they're two friends, one of them says, you know, I, I, I think I'm going to steal this. I'm going to steal this. If the other goes along with it and says, okay, well, go ahead, what's it to me? Then he's not a good friend, is he? But if he says, no, you should not do this, no, 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 don't do this, then he's a good friend. But he's a best friend if he even tells on his friend, if he tells uh, some authority, that look, if he threatens his friend, says, I'm going to go to the police with this, or I'm going to go to your parents, I'm going to tell the teacher, then that's a best friend. God is our best friend. And so he is our Lord and Master, and that also includes that he's our mother and father, but he's also our best friend, eternal friend. He's our child also. Now, now the, this nectar is even sweeter because now we have a parent-child relationship with him. He's our parent, but we are also, but he's our child as well. After all, we know him as Yashodanandan. We know him as Nandan Nandan, he's a son of Yashoda, he's a son of Nand. So he's willing to become our child as well. And now we can love him even more. We can love him as a servant loves a very wonderful master, very kind-hearted, very compassionate, very generous master. But then we go further and we love him as we, as we love a friend then this is a relationship of equals. 
And then we go into another relationship, a higher relationship where he's a child, we are the parent. And now the nectar even grows because now we have even more, more privileges and the restrictions have gotten smaller. Then we go to the highest relationship with him. That is the same as the highest relationship in the world, the lover-beloved relationship. He's our beloved. We love him the most. And now we have every possible privilege and there are no restrictions at all. No restrictions. So now we can love him the most. We can serve him the most in this way. So before we start meditating, we have to have this background information. I cannot just tell you, okay, now do, let's meditate. I've got to tell you, I've got to give you background information. That knowledge is important. How will we meditate otherwise? So when we start to meditate, before we start to meditate, we need to understand that we should meditate not just on our third eye or on our breath or on the um, flame of a candle or on some one thought or on a symbol, like symbol of Om. No, this will not work. What works, if you want your meditation to be very effective, then select Rup Dhyan. Meditate, but on God. And not just on the murti, not on the idol over here. That, okay, there is a murti of Bhagwan Sri Krishna, I will just stare at him. I don't mean to say that, that we just stare, look at the murti. No, use the beautiful idols over here as your base, base. This is the base. You get some hint of, as to how you're going to think of him. What does he look like? Although we are free to think of him as we wish, but Rasik saints have given up some hints. And the depiction of these murtis, depiction of Krishna in the murti, depiction of Radha in this murti, is according to what saints have described them as. For instance, saints have said that Sri Krishna has curly black hair that he has a bluish kind of skin. That blue color doesn't exist in the world, so the artist does his or her best. So you have a bluish looking, bluish complexion. The eyes are very beautiful, they're very large, they extend to the ears. The artists don't capture it completely, but they do their best. So we have the murti, or a picture, a photo of Radha and Krishna. Now we need bhajans and kirtans, we need also words, beautiful words and music, words set to beautiful music. So we need to call out to Krishna, we need kirtan, we need to call out to him. Sometimes we do kirtan, such as we did a while ago. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. We're just doing Nam Sankirtan, just taking the name of God. Hare Ram Krishna, names of God. Sometimes we chant the leelas, pastimes, as we did also. Yashoda is waking up Krishna. We, we sang that. <coughs> and it's so mesmerizing. And we do Rup Dhyan with that. That is the best. Yashoda is waking Krishna up. He's not willing to wake up. So we do Leela Sankirtan. We uh, sing about his, his virtues, his attributes, his divine attributes. Oh, Karuna Sagar. We, we sing in different Kirtans that he is so wonderful, he's so compassionate, he's so, you're so forgiving, we say to him. And we, we do the skirtan of Nam Sankirtan, Gun Sankirtan, Leela Sankirtan. So that is very important for us. We are people living in Kali Yug. This era is called the age of Kali. It's a very difficult age, spiritually speaking. <coughs> because our mind naturally goes towards the world. We live in this world and the world rushes into our mind. We see the world and we become attached to the world. We hear worldly sounds, we become attached to the world. We taste worldly food, we become attached to the world. So when we are trying to think about God, the mind says, I want to think about, I want rasgulla. We say, Krishna is very sweet, ah, but the gulab jamun is sweeter, says the mind. We say to the mind, let's go and see what Krishna is doing. No, I want to see my mom. I want to see my son. 
I want to see my loved ones. These are my very own. Our mind is attached to the world. So we need to help the mind in the, in the best way we can. And the six saints have recommended that we use, well, God has recommended that we use bhajans and kirtans. Especially for us in this age of Kali, we are told to use bhajans and kirtans. And this is why we sing when we meet here. Kali Jug Keval Naam Adhara Sumiri Sumiri Nar Utrahi Para Ehi Kali Kaal Na Sadhan Duja Jog Na Jap Tap Brat Makh Puja Various places in the Ram Chalit Manas, Saint Tulsidas has said, O oh people living in Kali Yug, the only way of concentrating the mind on God in this age, in this era, is by taking the holy name. Hare namaiva, 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 mama jivanam, kalau nastyeva, nastyeva, nastyeva gati ranyatha. Skanda Purana. Same message. So we take the help of bhajans and kirtans. Why? Because these are beautiful words composed by saints who are true lovers of God. And then they also set the music to it. In this case, in our case over here in Yugal Kunj, the philosophy of Jagat Guru Sri Kripalu Ji Maharaj is taught, and the words that are contained in this bhajan book, they're all his. So he has composed these bhajans and kirtans, and he has set the music to them himself. So we have the benefit of a divine mind giving us divine words and composing <coughs> these divine melodies. When we sing, then we are able to think about God. We will run out of time soon, so I would like to sing this Bhajan, if you don't have this uh, bhajan book, can you please raise your hand? It's in Hindi as well as in English, so everybody can understand it, and the explanation is below as well. This is one of my very favorite bhajans, page 43, and on top of the page you see 43 as well, bhajan number is 43. Langar mote dagar chalat kar rar. I aapko Hindi mein jaldi se samjha deti hoon. Radhika ji ek sakhi se pyare sham sundar ke kiye huye prem yukt udhamo ka varnan karti hain. He sakhi, langar yani udhami, vah udhami sham sundar mujhe marg mein chalte huye bhi tang karta hain. Mujhe dekhte hi turant hi jhapat kar panghat par lipat chata hain. Aur jab mein kuch khari khoti sunati hoon, tab mera ghada bhi phor dalta hain. Tatha meri motiyo ki lado evam mere haro ko tod deta hain. Ari sakhi, barsane ki sankari gali mein मेरी मटकी में ताक कर निशाना लगाकर कांकरी मारता है अरि सखी वह निर्लज्ज मुझसे कहता है कि हमारी तुम्हारी जोड़ी अच्छी है एवं ऐसा कह, ऐसा कहकर बरबस उधम करता है मैं चिल्लाकर कहने लगती हूं अरे कोई इस उधमी से बचाओ मुझे बार-बार प्यारी भानु दुलारी घूंघट वाली नारी कहकर पुकारता है जगत गुरु श्री कृपालु जी महाराज कहते हैं कि अरि सखी कहां तक कहूं वो बिना कुछ बोले ही आंखों के कटाक्ष पात से तिरछी नजरों से ही पता नहीं क्या-क्या बातें करता है सो नाउ यू विल गो इनटू द लवर बिलवर्ड रिलेशनशिप विद श्री कृष्ण यू आर अ गोपी वेदर यू इवन इफ यू आर मेल थिंक ऑफ योरसेल्फ एज अ फीमेल 16 ईयर ओल्ड ब्यूटीफुल गोपी हु लव्स कृष्ण एंड ही इज योर बिलवर्ड हियर राधा रानी इज रिलेटिंग टू वन ऑफ हर गोपी फ्रेंड्स द मिस्चीवियस श्याम सुंदर कृष्ण टीजेस मी एज आई वॉक डाउन द लेन on the shore of the Yamuna River, he launches a surprise attack, breaking my pot of water and snatching my beaded necklace and breaking it. Osaki, seeing, my, seeing me take water home in the water pot, he corners me in the narrow lanes of Gavarvan and aims pebbles at my water pot. He forcibly talks to me, saying, we make a good couple, Saki, don't you think? Someone should scold this shameless scoundrel, says the gopi, he says Radharani. He says to me, oh sweet gopi, oh my darling Bhanu Dulari, why do you cover your face with the veil? Ghungat, says Jagatguru Shri Kripalu Ji Maharaj, without speaking a word, Sham Sundar speaks volumes through eye gestures. So now let's try to do Rup Dhyan, try to think about Shri Krishna. Use these murtis, use this murti of Krishna, use the murti of Radharani as your basis for your meditation. And then close your eyes and think about Think about yourself as a gopi and Krishna as your beloved. And this scene is unfolding. You're at the bank of the river Yamuna and he is there. And you are taking water home 
and you're balancing the pot of water on your head, and mischievous Krishna aims pebbles at the water pot, and you know everything that you have read, that I've read for you, and you will read as you as you as we go along. Just envision that, and do this rup dhyan. When your mind goes here and there, wherever the mind goes, put Krishna there, or however you want to think about God, put God there, who is your beloved, and that is the way to meditate. Today is not the only day, day that I'm going to speak about meditation, Rup Dhyan. I will continue with this topic next Sunday as well. But we have started with this topic. And so now let's sing. Nangar <laughs> Dagar chalat kar rar Nagar moti Dagar chalat kar rar Nagar moti Dagar Thank you. 
शाम सुंदर की जै। जै। लीला धारी की 